Hello, uh, my name is Tegan McBride. I'm from Rave Catchments. Uh, the, I'm the Sustainable Agriculture Project Officer um, looking after agriculture in the Mackaywit Sunday and Isaac region. Uh, today is part of a series um, looking at upskilling farmers for changes in uh, climate and market demands. So helping farmers adapt to those changes in what consumers are after. Uh, today we're here with uh, Erica Hughes from Farm Meets Booty uh, <laughs> to talk to you about um, uh, some different avenues for selling your produce and how to tell that story better to those um, different consumers. Um, this funding is all uh, brought about by an Australian Government National Land Care Program. So we applied for that funding and were successful in a 12 month project. Um, you'll be able to see a few different videos um, in this series. The first one is um, Marketing Providence, and that was with Michelle Bell Turner from Mangali Creek Dairy. Uh, that happened in November 2018. So if you'd like to check that out, um, have a look at the Reef Catchments YouTube channel and uh, stay tuned for some more videos from some um, marketing gurus around Australia. Thanks. Okay, um, Erica, hi. Hi Tegan, thanks for having me here today. So I'm just going to talk on um, Farm Meets Booty app, which we've developed to help producers connect directly with customers to sell produce direct. Um, and then I'll talk more on who wants to source your sustainable produce. So as a farmer, how you can meet your foodie and connect with them to tell your story and ultimately sell your produce. So, um, a bit about myself, um, I'm from Farm Meets Foodie and I developed, my husband and I have a small property at Mount Malloy up in far north Queensland. Um, we were looking at how we could sell our produce, um, we've just got a few kale at the moment, looking at what else we might grow to sell locally to restaurants and cafes down at Port Douglas. Um, so I was envisaging having to go down there and knock on every door and see who might want to buy direct from the farm and, and what they might want to buy and thinking that's going to be quite time consuming. At the same time, I was also organising events where we were using an all local produce menu for the catering um, and helping the caterers to source that produce. Even though I knew a lot of farmers and worked with a lot of farmers, I found it quite difficult to find out what was going to be available for that occasion and whether the producers uh, would want to sell us sell it to us direct for that occasion and in what and for the quantities we wanted. So I was thinking there must be an easier way to do that. And with um, the technology that's around now, you know, always using different apps and programs um, and sites to connect with people, I thought there's a great opportunity to connect producers to commercial food businesses so they can sell product direct and ultimately get better returns. For their product and have a bit more control over it, um, where their product's going and, and what returns they're getting. So that's how it started out and this is what we've ended up with, the Farmer Meets Booty app. This is just a um, screenshot of the front page of the app. So we have a section for products, so that's where producers upload what produce they have available, what quantities. And then we have the producers and the commercial foodies and then transporters. Um, so each business has their own profile within the app. So these are examples of some of the producers on the site. Um, and there's quite a variety. It's been really popular with, I guess, sustainable producers, like the ones in, that are doing this program. Um, particularly, you know, there's a few organic producers, biodynamic, and quite a few niche products. Um, so, and then we have commercial foodies also have a profile. So these are some of the examples. And the commercial food businesses are quite varied as well. There's, um, you know, these types of juice companies, um, cooking schools, or some of the smaller um, fruit and veg shops, and then other people wanting to make, you know, fermented foods. And then we've got just standard restaurants, cafes, um, we've got butchers and bakers, quite a variety of food businesses on the site. So each business sets up their own profile. Um, that's why we think of it as a bit like a social dating platform. It's just all about connections and you set up a profile and, and meet each other and contact each other 
through the site. So this is a farmer's profile. Um, you have an about us section and your contact details and what types of products you produce. And then if you have any products currently available, they'd be viewed here. And then this is a profile for a restaurant um, and a very similar setup, but they have the product, types of products they're searching for. So this, product, this restaurant's searching for everything. And then these are just some of the examples of the types of produce that are listed and, and how they look when they're listed. So um, quite a variety of produce, free range eggs, pumpkins, turmeric, duck eggs, um, edible flowers. And you can see we've got um, producers from all over Australia trialing the site. So we started in far North Queensland and the majority of the users on the site are in North Queensland, but we've got people from every state now. Um, trying it out. So it's pretty early stages, but if anyone wants to try it out, you're welcome to try it out at no cost. The eventual plan is for it to be a subscription model for $25 a month, but at the moment, um, just while we're still getting numbers on there and, and, and refining some of the features, there's no cost to use it. So um, you're welcome to try it out. Just go to the website, farmitsbeauty.com.au and go from there. You'll need a photo. Um, of your farm and a profile photo of your produce or yourself to to get started and your contact details but no card details or anything like that's required so that's the farm meets video um so the next session i wanted to talk was uh, meeting your foodie exploring who wants your sustainable produce and how you're going to get in touch with them so there's three demographics I wanted to talk about. The first being chefs and commercial food businesses, similar to the ones that are on the Farm Meets Foodie app. Then there's the home foodie and food bloggers. Um, so we're gonna look at who they are, what drives them, why you wanna connect with them and how you're gonna connect with them. So the home foodie. Um, so I'm stereotyping a bit here as who the home foodie is. Um, so you might not be selling direct to them, but ultimately they are who is consuming your produce. You may be selling direct to them as well. What drives them is mostly health, environment and ethics. Um, there's been a real push in Australia, or not in Australia, probably worldwide wide in this um, demographic of people who are on a reasonable income, they're professionals, they're environmentally and ethically conscious, and they go out of their way to source um, you know, they're happy to go out of their way and be put out to source the produce they believe is better for them and better for the environment. Um, and, and more so they're looking at supporting farmers as well. So they you know, they don't mind being a bit inconvenienced to do that, whether that's going to the markets or, um, you know, ordering online or going direct to the farm or even just looking in more detail while they're shopping in the supermarket for labelling and, and things that are telling them the story of that produce and where it's come from and, and how it's grown and if it's growing ethically and in, in an environmentally sound manner. And that's been taken even further more recently with packaging and that type of thing. So sustainability can be quite broad and it's important as farmers to be telling your story what you're doing sustainably so that they know. Um, so the Woolworths Future of Fresh reports found that Australians are already willing to pay at least 5% more for ethical products that minimise environmental impact. And they're expecting those percentages to be even higher for the, for the coming generations, the younger generations as they're getting to become consumers. Um, so why would you want to connect with the, with this group, the home foodies? Um, you want them to know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, particularly, it re just reduces your risk. If, if something goes wrong in your industry, you're probably at less danger of being lumped into that whole group. So if you're doing things a bit differently and sustainably, um, when things go wrong, then these guys are still happy to search out your product. And it might just not be about sustainability. For instance, with the mm -hmm. strawberry scare we had last year, the needles in strawberries, the, those strawberry farmers that had already had great relationships with the consumer 
um, who knew their story, knew who they were, they were going out. The consumers were, you know, can't going to the farm gate, by still buying their strawberries, even picking the strawberries for them. And often, like the smaller supermarkets, like up here on the Tablelands, the IGA supported our local strawberry growers by stocking their strawberries so that they could sell them all on rather than having to turn them back into the paddock, which is what happened in other areas. So just by building those connections and people know who you are and what's different about your produce, then they can have your back when things aren't going as well. And on a usual day-to-day -day time, it's just about them seeking out your product. So if they're not, they might not be buying direct for you, but they can ask for your product in the supermarkets and then um, that creates demand for your product. So the best ways to connect with them, traditionally it's been through markets and food festivals, um, traditional media, newspapers and radio. Food magazines are really good. I'm not sure if you have one down in um, your region, but we're really lucky. <laughs> not yet, but um, I think there is um, potentially plans to, to put something together as a part yeah. of this project, yes. Oh, fantastic, yeah. Well, we've got up here in Cairns the FNQ Food Magazine and Townsville's got Townsville Food Mag and they've been fantastic. Um, both for commercial food businesses, but also for farmers to get their stories out and what they're doing differently and sustainably and, and how they're connecting with consumers and where their products can be found. So if you can get that going, that would be fantastic. And then the other obvious one is social media. Um, Instagram's really popular for the home foodie. Great place to connect with them. Um, it gives them a place to see what you're doing and, and why you're doing it and what you're doing that's different and sustainable. And places like Facebook are also good. They also give you the opportunity to post in closed groups. So closed groups can be really valuable for finding that, um, that niche market, so that real home foodie market that want this ethical, sustainable and environmentally sound produce. So you can find some of those groups in your area, then it's a great place to post and let them know about what you're producing. Uh, and email's another great way to stay in touch with them, have a you know, regular newsletter, even it's just once every couple of months to let them know what's going on with your product and your farm and keep them updated and, and let them know where they can purchase your product. So that's the home foodie. Um, the next group I want to talk about is chefs and commercial food businesses. So there's a real trend for local seasonal menus. Um, it's hard to tell if that's come just from the public and from that home foodie group or whether it's also come from celebrity chefs and the reality TV shows, which we see a lot of. Um, so there's no doubt the chefs are passionate about food and produce and there's a massive trend towards use of seasonal menus. I was actually surprised when I started Farm Meets Foodie um, what the variety of types of businesses that were that were looking to source local produce. Um, and so this fellow here is Clinton, he's from Obi Restaurant at Younger Borough and you can see how happy he is to be sourcing local produce. He uses a lot on his menu. Um, so other business, some other examples is we've got a food truck up here, the good, the bad and the fugly. They go out of their way to source um, local produce. They get organic beef, um, Mangali Creek Dairy, all these things. And they're not only sharing it on their menu boards, but they're also posting on social media about the farms that they're getting the produce from. So that's great publicity for those farms because they have you know, all their customers are following them online as well. So that's a great opportunity um, there. Another example is the Queen's Arms Hotel in Innisfail. The um, owner operator there is also very passionate about using local produce so much so that he's got a board, a whole, on a wall of the pub dedicated to the producers whose food are on his menu. So there's a little profile for each um, farm, and which is lovely to see. Um, so very often these 
businesses that are used wanting to use local and sustainable produce are owner operated businesses where they have a bit more control over what they're doing on their menus and they're they're driven by passion really um so but there is that driving consumer demand from the home foodies so we're seeing more examples of corporate businesses that are aiming for that paddock to plate and i think tegan you talked about the airlines in your presentation in the last session um getting into that and then like even coles has just opened coles local which is a like boutique supermarket at surrey hills in melbourne that's just focused on gourmet local produce and telling the farm story and the paddock to plate so you know if Coles and Woolworths are getting on board that this is definitely a thing that's happening and, and you want to be in on it too. Um, so the obvious reasons why you want to connect is to be able to um, sell direct to these businesses but then and build a relationship with them, but also to allow them to be telling your story for you, which will draw you customers in other areas as well. So that... Oh, yeah, to go on further from that, the trend is getting even more into a really sustainable menu. So there are chefs now that are wanting to not just source local, but wanting to source a sustainable uh, produce from sustainable farms, I guess. So sustainability, as you would appreciate, is quite a broad heading. Um, but so this first fellow, Cameron Matthews, he's um, on the Sunshine Coast. He's um, just spent some time in Europe researching uh, restaurants that are doing just that, who've, who've created their menus around sustainable produce, and he's aiming to do the same. So his slogan on his website is creating a blueprint to improve sustainability across sourcing, sourcing society, environment, and chef's mental health. So that's quite broad, but quite exciting. And then the Charming Squires of South Bank of Brisbane, they also have a fantastic menu there. Um, this is a little sample here. So they're committed to supporting local farmers who operate sustainably on farms throughout Queensland, Northern New South Wales. Um, their chefs, Denise and Nick, um, are really passionate about seasonal local produce. So on their website, they're um, quoting a survey from Open, Open Table, which is a reservations platform that 81% of diners thought it was important that the food they eat when dining out is ethically stored, sourced and sustainable. So that's huge, 81%. That's yeah, quite amazing. Um, so how to connect with them? Social media, again, is a great place to start. Um, follow their pages. Um, definitely you know, most of these chefs that are really passionate about using local produce are, are saying that on their um, business pages. So that's a great place to engage with them. You might not necessarily be saying, um, you know, telling them about your produce, but you would just be commenting on what they're doing. But that's important to have your story already been told on your, to have a business page rather than just an individual page and have the story about your produce being told. So when you do comment on their sites, they can see, you know, Ben's Blueberries or whatever your business name is and click on that and then find out what you're doing that way. I think that's a really important point, Erica, just engaging in the conversation across those platforms. Um, yeah, just finding out, looking on their pages and finding out what's going on and then um, just engaging in that discussion. You don't need to be... Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it will just happen naturally. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and the more you can um, engage with others, that's the social media is all about engagement and connecting. And it, yeah, it doesn't have to be a sales plug, it can just be making that connection. I think really important to have a brand for your business so that. Um, so that they know that you are selling produce and not just Joe blogs. Um, liking what they're doing. Um, so apart from that, uh, they also love to know your recipes, what you do with your produce and, and what's great about it. They're, um, you know, creatives and they want to do amazing things with their menu and they love to know from those um, 
who are producing the food often have, you know, menus that may go on back many generations that, that might be useful for what they're doing. So they love you to share, share your knowledge and recipes. Convenience is a big thing, obviously. Most order through suppliers, um, where it's all ordered and delivered from one platform. So the passionate ones, again, will be okay to be inconvenienced a bit to source this local and sustainable produce. They might be happy to go out of their way to do that, um, which is probably a great place to start. This is those more passionate producers that it, uh, oh, sorry, not producers, passionate commercial food businesses that are doing things a bit differently rather than just trying every restaurant and cafe that may not be interested. So, so it's a bit great to get your product in front of suppliers or onto online platforms like Bar Meets Foodie where you know um, that they'll be able to see what you've got. So over time, maintain the relationship. Like a lot of these places have a high turnover of chefs and staff, so it'll be a constant connection. Um, and also keeping them up to date with how your supplies are going. Um, if you're likely to have an excess of produce, they might be able to do something new on their menu with that. Or if um, something's going wrong and you're not going to be able to supply, letting them know so they can make alternate arrangements. These chefs that are really passionate about it are keen to you know work with you and work around what you're doing so that they can support and have that relationship as well so that Just that. Um, when when have you found is the best time to approach um chefs oh yeah oh, thanks Steve. um yeah probably in the mid-afternoon so between their rush hour so lunch time is busy obviously and dinner time is busy so the advice I get from them, yeah, is around two-ish in mid-afternoon is probably the best time. Yeah. And early in the week or when's, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, probably Monday, Tuesdays would be yeah. the safest time. There's um, one um, farmer in the U uh, in Canada. He uh, sends out a fresh sheet every Monday morning, so um, letting them know what's available for the week and that it'll be able to be delivered on Wednesday or Thursday. It's a pretty simple little sheet, just letting them know, like, what um, fresh greens or whatever is available, what kind of quantities they could purchase in, um, and just giving them that information. It's not really bothering them. It just comes through on the email and they can take it or leave it. Yeah, that's a great idea. Very good. And I guess that's another thing too. You can direct message on social media as well. Just drop them a note if, yeah, if there's something. If you're not sure about calling in to see them, you can leave a phone message. But, yeah, there's lots of opportunity there. Just to be aware that they're busy the same as we are and, and have times that are busier than other times for sure. Uh, so... The last group that I'm going to talk about is food bloggers. So you're not necessarily going to be selling your produce to the food, blog, food bloggers, but they're a good opportunity to get your story out there. So who are they? They're food lovers generally, and they what drives them is their love of food and their desire to share their excitement about it. Um, so if you get the opportunity to get your food in front of them, and get them sharing it for you. Some of these bloggers have huge following, so um, it's big opportunities there. But most of them, it's a hobby for them rather than a job. So um, all the ones that I've met anyway. So why would you want to connect with them? To, as I said, to get your products across to them. Um, there's a couple that I found, sorry, to get their products across to more home and commercial foodies. Um, in your in the Whitsunday areas, Miss Pumpkin Pie and the Whitsunday Foodie, they've um, just got a smaller following. They've probably just not been, haven't been going that long. I think one's got a couple of thousand and one's got a few hundred. But it'd be worth connecting with them, um, even again if that's just um, just commenting on some of their posts, so let, letting them know that you exist and and hopefully they'll check you out from there. But if you want a more direct approach, we had this event, A Taste of the Tablelands, an Instameet, um, which is all around Instagram, but Facebook people, anyone on social media or blogging can use it, um, where 
the producers supplied a range of produce and we set it up as a grazing table. We worked with Petals and Pine Cones, a cafe here on the tablelands to, to make it all look pretty. Um, so then we put all the what's called handles, so the link to the, the social media for each of the farmers that were showing produce on that day. So then people came along, took photos and tasted the food um, and then shared that on their social media and tagged those farmers in it. And so then that has a knock-on effect of a whole lot of other people seeing, seeing your post. So not all of these people who came along were huge bloggers or influencers. But when we talk about influencers, they're called influencers because they have a lot of followers and on social media and and they can influence people's buying power and that type of thing. But there's still, there's value in having people with just sharing with their friends and families as well, because in your community, that's um, who your customers may well be. So yeah, if you've had the opportunity to run something like that, it might be worthwhile doing that in your region. Um, again, you could direct message the food bloggers on social media. And it's important too to have your have a brand and a business page so that they can get excited about your story and, and share it. Um, so you don't, yeah, I guess the thing a lot of them are doing for a hobby, they don't necessarily, people have this illusion that they get free food from restaurants and things. That's not normally the case. They, they're just doing it out of the love of when they're eating out, sharing what they're doing. Um, they do like it if you if you share their posts that you acknowledge them and and they do like to converse and interact with, with other people commenting on what they're doing. So that's a great opportunity for you there. So that's about all I wanted to cover. Um, this is just the links to all our all my contact details and then to our handles to all our social media and the website, welcome to go and try out the Farm Meets Foodie app. We do a few courses on marketing your produce um, just here at Mount Malloy at the moment. We'll be doing some online ones in the future, so you're welcome to get involved with that. But the details will be on our social media and the website. Well done, thank you, Erica. Good job. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did um, you have any other questions, Stephen? Oh, um, I guess. My thoughts around the commercial foodies, um, so when when approaching um, restaurants, my personal experience has been that they are, their preference is to um, purchase from one supplier, so they might have a regular um, fruit and veg supplier that they go to every week and um, there is opportunity to get your produce sold through them but the consistency of supply can be an issue in that middleman situation um, have you come across that previously and do you have any recipes to get around it <laughs> yeah it is tricky you mean the consistency of you being able to com com supply consistently for the um for the supplier yeah 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 yeah, no, oh, I don't really have an answer for that. <laughs> um, and I guess the one way to do it is if you could team with other producers. But I guess the challenge is for them if they're wanting to be able to supply that constantly. That I guess that's only really going to change when the demand comes from the chef saying, I don't need edible flowers all year round. I just want what's available locally now. So if they're not, you know, I guess the supplier's got the dilemma of there's a lot of chefs that they're supplying to as well that aren't worried about what's available locally and what's not. That's right. And again, it's just building up. If you can find those chefs that um, will take produce directly and aren't just going from the suppliers. But I do know people have had great success going through suppliers is that... Yeah. They only have to go have the produce picked up from that one person and it's get it. Safety safety driving. Driving. Yeah, that's right. So there's definitely advantages 
if you're able to supply enough for that market. Yeah, I think um, trying to find some producers who really uh, are interested in taking them some samples and if your produce is that outstanding, um, then, you know, there's the possibility of them asking for it um, or going out of their way to get it. And I think um, the freshness and the, the possibility of that freshness. So if you've picked it the day before and you're supplying to chefs the day after, it has a longer shelf life. There's a lot of opportunities to, um, yeah, just showcase the benefits of your product too. Um, yeah, that's right. Well, I had a um, restaurant in Cairns contact me that they were, he wanted the freshest product he could get and he's been flying it up from Brisbane wow. to get that. So he was prepared to you know, go and pick it up from the farm and that type of thing. So there are chefs out there that do want that, but just finding them. So, I mean, Farm Eats Foodie is a great place to start. We've got 150 food, commercial food businesses on there that are looking to source local. So that's an early date. Obviously, they're not all in the wet Sundays. But, you know, we're hoping to grow that and make that a bit easier to connect with those people. But that's the real challenge is, well, the first challenge is finding them and then getting the produce to them. Yeah. And, well, um, I think there's plans for you to have um, transport options on your website as well so yeah that's right really we're just starting to put that on there so we're just looking at getting more transporters on there to make that easy and yeah um, yeah I mean, way out to make that as easy as possible so that it's being picked up from your farm and dropped wherever those restaurants and cafes are the trouble being they're not on your main on the main transport routes at the moment so that's what we're looking at overcoming those issues that's why things like the Greater Sunday Food Network or um, other organisations like that, Taste Paradise, trying to get collectives together, not necessarily co-ops, but um, groups of producers from particular regions. And this, um, this project, I guess, we're getting together in those geographic locations. So we're meeting in Serena and Yangala. So um, whether it's a formalised group or not, we can get together as producers from particular regions and then try and organise, yeah, collective transport options or whatever that may be yeah great i think there's a lot of value too in sharing each other's stories on social media and things and really letting the chefs um and commercial food business and home food know how strong your local produce network is in your region and what's available um a lot might think there's not that much available locally but if you're out sharing each other's businesses and stories that um, really makes that a lot stronger. Well, um, that's my um, question for today. Um, I, I guess that commercial um, aspect is probably one that I have found um, a bit of a challenge and um, that's in my interest. I think um, the, the home foodies are a little bit easier. If they're um, really actively looking for the right produce, then that they're, um, they're easier to access. There is a um, still a convenience issue. I think if you're time poor, even though you want sustainably produced and locally produced food, really at the end of the day, if you need to make dinner, you, you go where you need to go to get it. So um, yeah. trying to make that easy for them. There's a lot of opportunities with doing that, um, sending emails, sending text messages, having um, produce available. Um, in an online store and delivery options. I think in the future that might be um, some potential for local producers to get in the hands of local home foodies. Yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity there too for producers to work together um, on that more as far as sharing transport options and sharing, like we've got producers here that are now sharing shop or um, stores at Rusty's Markets. Yeah. They don't have to both be there every weekend. They can taken in turns and share and yeah sharing that transport to distribute your produce together yep, like-minded businesses working together yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah there's opportunity to reduce that load on yourself yeah because um producing um distributing marketing it all sounds great yes we'll take all of those pieces of the dollar um but 
in actual fact, um, it's, it's a huge amount of work and all new skill sets to learn. Like you might produce wonderful food, but really um, learning how to market and learning how to, uh, and then like taking the time to distribute is actually, yeah, the big task. So um, the more we can do it together, the better. For sure. <laughs> Also recommend finding a young person that's good at social media in your life and letting them take on some of the load as well. And food them. <laughs> um, I was just, um, yeah, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being involved in this project and thanks for the work you're doing. No worries. Thank you. Thanks yeah. So um, that's okay. Um, so we might finish up there. Thanks everyone thanks very much Stephen. good luck with your projects everyone give us a call anytime if i can help out <laughs>